Well, here we are. We have our yellowy blue veiny zombie baby. And actually, he doesn't look too terrible. I mean, you know, he still still looks kind of nice. Um, and I think it has something to do with using that creasing, that wine colored creasing, because here's a baby that I use um, blue creasing on. And he looks a little bit more, even though I started to blush him a little bit, he looks a lot more blue. And then um, this is Landon. He already has um, a pink wash on. So he just came out of the oven. So this is what we're going to do right now. Um, I think what, uh, well, let me grab the palette again and talk about some of these colors. So here's a palette. This is a pink wash. And that is just the red, the paint thinner, and some baby skin. I sometimes use this. You can tell I use this a lot more because there's a lot less of it. And that is just the red with um, the paint thinner. And maybe just, <clears throat> pardon me, just a little bit of baby skin. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And the red that I'm talking about is this red, and it comes in your beginner kit. Ta -da! That one is thinned out a little bit with thinning medium because I don't like to use it straight out of the jar. And this is a mix that I make, and it's salmon. And I use this sometimes for blushing. And that is a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, and some pink thinner and some thinning medium. And this is lavender, and sometimes I use this. And this is some blue, red, baby skin, and paint thinner. Now, there's no one color that's better than the other. It just depends on the baby that you're working with. We're going to just use some of the basic colors right now because probably that's what you have. And let's just start from the very beginning and you can experiment later by mixing different colors. Everybody develops their own palette. What will happen is you'll mix something, you'll use it, and you'll say, gosh, I really like that. And you'll just keep, keep using that. And again, if you're doing... Um, an ethnic baby, you might lean a little bit more towards the lavenders. <clears throat> if you're doing a very peaches and cream baby, maybe something a little more salmon-y. I like to mix them and play with them and see how they work together. It's still, after doing this many babies, it's still, um, still fun and I'm still learning new stuff and I'm still experimenting and I think everybody should. So let me find my glasses here and put them on. Okay, so we've done flesh We've done a little yellow. We um, did some veining and we did some blue modeling. And then we creased this baby with some of the Bountiful Baby um, creasing color, which is that kind of wine purple. And now I'm gonna put some red on this baby. I'm going to use the pink color. Actually, I should use the red because you're more likely to use that. Here, let's use the red instead. I mean, I used red on Joseph, but you didn't. Let, but you didn't see me do it. We're not blushing yet. We're just putting on some red spots. Here's a sponge, really old one for me, and this is probably needs to be replaced pretty soon. I just got um, tweezers and I pulled out a bunch of bits. Now I'm going to load up that sponge. And when I say load up, I mean don't get this totally saturated. You're just going to wet the top layer of this sponge. And then you're going to pat down on a paper towel. You don't want to see it look um, juicy. You should be able to see the spots like that. And let me see if I can tear off a piece of paper towel so you can see it better. Let me load it up again because I think I'm losing paint from patting. Okay. So you don't want to see this you want to see this and that's what it's going to look like on the baby's skin it's going to be pretty cool and whoever came up with this idea is a genius because it looks so realistic and you might if you're not familiar with newborn skin or you haven't held one in a really long time next time you pull up some photos on the internet or you're around a baby or you have your own baby take a look you can see this little capillary action under this skin and it looks just like this it's so cool. We're just patting all around. Remember, we're not, we want to see all those little bitty holes. We don't want to see 
full coverage of pink. Um, and later on, if we need to do this again, we will. And I go everywhere, ears, eyes, nose, you name it, I do it. And I might be out of frame again. There we go. And so we're gonna let that dry. Let's load up that sponge a bit. Probably not too much because it's just an arm. Just gonna go all the way around. Make sure you get inside of here. There's gonna be tight spots. You can make a smaller sponge to get into those tight spots. And I have one. I'm just too lazy to grab it. There we go. Now when that dries, it's going to look like, <clears throat> like this, like land in here. You're gonna see some little bits of pink. Um, and when we do our final flesh layer, uh, this will pop out a little bit more because some of the, the brown in the baby skin will pull some of that red out. <clears throat> Let me get one of his limbs so you can see that. I'm losing my voice again. There's a limb. And um, when I was rubbing the creasing stuff in, I, I remember I feather out to the edges. It gave this little illusion of pink. It's almost like blushing, but not quite. And um, what I'm going to do, since we're at this point, is I'm going to start blushing Landon. Yay, this is the fun part. And um, same brushes. I used to use a mess of um, cheap makeup brushes. And what I'm gonna do is grab up, I would use the salmon on him, but I want to use colors that you already have so you don't have to worry about mixing and stuff. Let's just keep this kind of easy. I'm gonna take a little bit of that red. Now remember, that's not, that's not red straight out of the, um, this is not red straight out of the jar. I've taken some red straight out of the red jar and I mixed it into another tub with some thinning medium to thin it out a little bit. I don't want it to be super, super, super deep because I want to play with that and move that paint around. I don't want to stain real quick. And he's a little bit warm, so I probably should put it off. But since we're here, I'm being feeling impatient. Now, let me show you on this plate. That's about the consistency of red that we want that we're going to use for blushing. And once again, we're going to put the paint on. We're going to take the paint off. Let's start with the foot. That's everybody's favorite part. Some babies have a full pink foot. Some babies have a purpley foot. Some babies have a foot that is just pink around here. And that's what I'm going to do with this baby. I've given it, this is probably a little thinner than it should be, and I'll, I'll show you the difference, but I'll thicken it up and then you can see the difference. And that is all I'm doing. And I may do this for a couple of layers until I get the effect that I want. And then again, I'm gonna go in there and get inside those toes because those toes want paint everywhere, not just there. And it's okay if this sticks in all of these little little creases, we want it to. We just don't want it to stick and become clumpy and dirty. Now, it is going on very, very thin because I'm using a very thin wash. And pat very gently because although you want to remove the excess paint, you do want to leave some on there. So you want to pounce some in, but not too hard that you're removing it all. And you'll feel it when you you know, pat down on there, you'll see maybe too much is coming off. I'm going to take a dry brush. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm just going to clean out those little creases. I want the red in there, but I don't want it to be dirty. Okay, so there's a nice pink foot. This is a, a place where the thinning medium really comes in handy because I don't want the paint to be super thick. I, I don't want it to be thin, but I want it to go on a little bit thicker than um, the paint thinner would do. I don't want it dripping. There we go. 
Let's do a knee. I do a circle, because why not? And then I'm going to just pat that down around in a circle, just like that. A rosy knee is pretty, but a red knee looks like somebody got a scraped knee. So just light, you can always darken up later. Um, because I used the wine, I don't have to do too much shading around the ankles because a lot of that happened. But I like pink ankles. And then maybe on the inside here, a little bit on the inside of the arch of the foot around that ankle. Maybe where these big red, I mean these big creases are. And then maybe on toes. Um, tops of toes are awesome. Make sure you go all around, not just the tips. And try to avoid the nail beds because painting nail beds afterwards is kind of difficult. So if we leave them bare, it'll make our final um, details layer go pretty quickly. Now, red, your pink layer, you may have to do several times. And once you do that, you may go back and say, oh, I need a little bit more blue, or I could use a little more yellow there. Um, you just keep going around in a circle until it makes you happy. The goal here is just to kind of get the basics, kind of take away the, oh my gosh, I'm about to start. I don't want to ruin this baby. I don't know what I'm doing. I've watched all the videos and here I am with the paint and the brushes and this is scary and I'm not sure I'm feeling comfortable. I just kind of want to demystify this a little bit, if I can. There we go. That looks kind of awesome. I have this feeling to add another red modeling layer. Even though this baby is plenty pink, I just have this feeling that it could use another go. So I'm just gonna do a light one. I'm just going with how I feel. Um, there's, I can't, you can't do this wrong. If you're going carefully and you're doing light layers, you can't go wrong. Don't worry about making mistakes. Your first baby will be precious. May not be perfect, but it's gonna be a special baby because it's kind of magical. There you go. So I did another layer, and I think that's what I'm going to do to the rest of Landon. I'm just going to pink him up. Let's do a hand super quick. I think I'm... Let's get some of this. We're going to do an elbow the same way. I just do a nice little circle. And then I'm just going to pat it down and kind of feather those edges so it looks natural and blushy. And then I might go around this wrist part here and down here where the creases are and pink it up just a little bit more because this is a really pretty pink. It's red, but it's mellowed out a lot and when it goes on and it's blended in, it's a nice pink. And then I'm gonna, on the fingers, I'm gonna go across on knuckles. I don't know why I like the way that looks, I just do. And I'm gonna do fingertips and that knuckle up there where all those wrinkles are. Now it's really super hard to get a sponge in there. You can cut a sponge to get in there if you want and pat it in. And that's probably a smart thing to do. I don't have one handy. So what I'm gonna do is just take a dry brush, a very soft dry brush. If I can find one, my goodness, I have a million brushes and I can't see the one that I want. Here's one, just, and I, you know, <laughs> The funny thing is, the more worn out they get, look at how, how pitiful this brush is. The more worn out it is, the better it is because it gets softer and, uh, and it works better. And I'm just patting, basically using this to pounce in some of that pink without removing it and just kind of softening up those edges a little bit. And that's what you get, some pretty little pink.